Hello there. In the previous video I was teaching you uh, how to play with white and I uh, showed you a simple approach and a simple way you can build up your repertoire and just uh, start to go on and uh, playing uh, with white pieces with confidence and uh, knowing that you will play uh, solid and uh, principal chess just following opening principles without uh, any need to learn you know tons of uh, opening theory. So now I will do the same thing for black. So the, the things are a little bit different when it comes to black pieces because uh, usually the white player has the initiative, he has the attack, you have to play a little bit defensively, but basically it's not so different. So you are just following the same opening principles, you are just uh, using your common sense, your uh, logic, uh, logical thinking, uh, common chess understanding, and uh, this, this is all you need uh, to play solid chess. So let me first start with the most simple example. So if he plays uh, e4, how do you want to respond? Uh, well, according to uh, general principles and uh, common sense, you want to fight for the center. So you just respond uh, by playing e5. Let's say that he continues normally developing his knight. Now he's attacking your pawn. So what does common sense tell you? You, you need to defend uh, the pawn. And now he can uh, do several things from here. Uh, he can go for the Italian game, like uh, I showed you in the previous video, uh, what I think he should play as white. But now, uh, from this point on, it's um, it's again very simple. You just uh, well uh, develop uh, your bishop, uh, so normal normal development, preventing him from playing d4. Let's say he plays c3, you play normally, so you, you develop your, your knight. After the, after the bishop, you could also play uh, knight first and then bishop later. It's, um, well, it, it leads to different kind of positions, but uh, both, both moves are, are allowed, are equally good. Let's say that he plays d3. So what would you do now? Well, you should castle as soon as possible. So you castled. Let's say he, ha he castles here. So what is your next goal? Your goal is to, uh, to develop uh, this bishop so you can play d6 immediately. Or you can play a prophylactic move if you don't like him to develop his bishop to g5. Maybe you can play a prophylactic move here, h6. So, okay, let's say, let's say I play h6 here, just for, for, the, for the sake of the argument. Uh, I'm playing some random move for white. I mean, these are all good moves, but uh, yeah, there, there are different ways he can play. But I just want to show you how to follow the principles. So you play uh, d6 here. Uh, why? Because you want to uh, very simply develop your bishop. Uh, let's say he, he wants to develop his knight. And now your bishop can come either here if you want to exchange it and uh, improve your pawn, putting your f-pawn in the center. So this is one way of play, or you can uh, try to pin this knight and uh, play from here. And this is it. So from this position you don't need to know any any theory, any variations, any particular move orders. Uh, from now on you have completed, uh, now you have completed your development. I mean, you, you will just uh, play your bishop, let's say here, and uh, you will you will at some point develop your queen, maybe here or here, the, connecting your rooks, put your rooks in the center, and of course you are always looking for play in the center, so you are looking for the nice, nice convenient moment uh, to play d5, and uh, you also know that he wants to play d4, at some nice convenient moment for him, so you will be aware of this um, uh, pawn break and this counterplay from white as well. And this is it, from this position you just uh, go on and play chess, you know, uh, trying to fight for the center, fight for the peace activity, centralizing pieces, uh, finding outposts for your knight, open diagonals for your bishops, uh, put the rooks on the open files, maybe be aware of which bishop is good, which is bad and so on. So this is all the chess, chess knowledge and skill you need to apply from here, but the opening stuff is over. Next thing I want to show you if uh, he plays uh, again e4, e5, uh, knight f3, knight c6. Now he can play very famously this uh, Ruy Lopez or Spanish um, Spanish attack. So he's uh, kind of pinning your pawn, attacking your pawn and uh, well, hoping to, to win this, uh, this pawn in the process. And here you can just play like Morphy did. So you can play a6 chasing away the bishop, knowing that uh, if he now takes the knight uh, uh, wanting to you know, uh, get your unprotected pawn, he will not be able to do this because you can uh, just uh, put the queen and uh, attack the knight and the pawn and regain the pawn with a uh, tempo check and, and so on. So this is just, a, you need to know, I mean, this small tactical tactical stuff. And, and this, this tactical um, stuff, they are present in, in uh, all variations, but this is what uh, you will learn by um, you know, just just by by playing. So, for example, if you, if you meet this for the first time and now he takes and afterwards he takes the pawn and you don't know what to do, you'll probably be a pawn down. Maybe you will lose the game. But then afterwards you will analyze the game and you will see um, where where did you uh, where did you go wrong and then you will uh, learn 
um, this kind, this tactical chunk. So th these little chunks you will just learn by playing and analyzing your games. Okay, let's say that he he goes back with the bishop, can chase it away uh, even even more. So following the principle that you should chase away uh, the pieces which uh, comes to your territory, and now you just continue normal development. So you develop the knight. Let's say he castles. You develop your bishop. Now there are a few a few ways you can develop your bishop. Uh, maybe you don't want to develop your bishop here because it's uh, it's unprotected. So maybe it's better to develop bishop on e7. Although this is also a playable move, you can, you can play this as well. Let's say he he continues, uh, you know, some some kind of development. Uh, now you don't need to be afraid of the pin because uh, your bishop is conveniently unpinning. So you can just castle. If he okay, let's let's say develop his knight. Uh, you can uh, now consider well maybe d6, and now you, your bishop is ready to go. So like in the previous example, your bishop can land either on e6 or on uh, g4. Maybe even Fianchetto is the option, so putting the bishop on b7 in some variations. But anyway, the opening is over. Uh, you will now uh, look to connect rooks at some point, uh, putting your uh, queen up, uh, maybe centralize your rooks, look for the pawn break in the center, and uh, from now on you, you need to, to play chess. You need to know how to apply uh, general positional principles of chess, uh, spotting tactics, and so on. Another very uh, common way to play is white, which you can face, is uh, to play scotch. So, for example, e4, e5, after this, uh, developing knights, he can go immediately d4. And here, again, you're just playing according to the principles. So, you, you just uh, take the pawn, uh, he takes with the knight. Now, you don't need to hurry, you know, taking the knight and uh, helping help him to improve his piece. You can just continue your normal development. So, you just develop kingside knight, uh, just normally. And if he develops knight here, you can now... You want to develop this bishop because you want to uh, castle as soon as possible. So you can play bishop to b4. And now you can see that this, this knight is pinned. Uh, so you are threatening to take this knight. So now he has uh, to do something about uh, about this. Uh, so there are several ways he can he can respond. He can, for example, pin your knight. So you cannot uh, take the pawn. Or he can uh, maybe now take the knight. For example, he can take the knight. And here, according to the general principles, he will take towards the center with the b-pawn or, you know, uh, even more preparing d4, and now he can, uh, you know, protect the, the the pawn with the bishop. Uh, before he couldn't protect the pawn with the bishop before moving this knight, because then this knight would be unprotected. And now from this point, uh, you are just thinking about how to develop your to develop your bishop. You can fianchetto it on b7. You can play it, uh, play maybe later accelerated fianchetto on a6, uh, not immediately because it will it will hang. But maybe after a5, you can develop your bishop here if you want. You can strike in the center immediately, playing d5. You can play d6 here, uh, just uh, you know, not not steering the pot too much. Anyway, you want to think about how to how to develop this bishop. But uh, right now, you will just castle because uh, you can castle and you should castle as soon as possible. He castles, and now you can play, for example, d5 immediately because you you have this pawn supported, and now the game goes on. So it's uh, again just uh, just playing chess. The other possibility here, uh, in order to stop you from taking this knight, is to pin your knight. So as long as your knight is pinned, you cannot take the pawn. Uh, so fr from this mo moment on, you can just again uh, continue your normal development. Maybe insert h6, just to put a question mark. Sometimes he will take the knight. If he just, uh, if he still still remains the the pin, you will have to leave it. it. So so here you will just uh, castle, and from now on you will just continue playing uh, normal moves. So for example, if he takes the knight here, you can again take with the v pawn. And then playing d5 and uh, develop your bishop, uh, or I mean, depending what what he does, he will uh, try to uh, free your bishop and uh, develop your bishop. And then you know it's just about uh, playing chess. Uh, the opening is over. All you need to do to to officially complete the opening is to is to put the queen up and connect your rooks. And you can do this in a very few moves, and you are okay. You can go on and continue playing chess. And the final topic, if we talk about how to respond to on e4, are gambits. So, uh, what, what, what to do when he's playing gambits? So, there is one simple rule of thumb. Uh, whenever you face a gambit in the opening uh, from the e4, uh, you should consider playing uh, d5. And this goes for all kinds of gambits. I will just show you three. So, for example, this is a famous king, uh, king's gambit, and uh, you play d4. This is called the uh, Falkbeer counter gambit. So, if he takes, you take, and from now on, you have just... Uh, you, have, you have officially equalized. So if you play knight, you will just continue your, your normal development, and uh, I mean you will very soon be able to develop your bishop either here or here or even in some of these these spots, 
Uh, this one is a little tricky because he can just uh, because he can just kick it away with d4. But um, okay, I mean you you can you can just continue uh, the normal game, you can, and you can also think about capturing this pawn uh, well uh, right away because it's now attacked twice. So if he tries to defend it, you can even just uh, take it. Yeah, this does violate uh, opening principle playing with the, the with the same piece twice. But uh, in this case, this is just justified. You're just getting back your your material, and uh, in, it's not um, some some great damage. I mean. You, you can still continue normal development and you can uh, castle very quickly. Um, there are many different lines in this in this kind of game, so it's difficult to predict how your opponent will react. But let's say that he plays d4, and um, you can now pin pin the knight. Just just for example, just to make a quick development, he now wants to consider maybe developing the bishop to castle himself. You castle, he castled, and now you you go on and uh, you know just just develop your pieces. Uh, you can develop your Knight here, a bishop here, for example, and uh, I mean you 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 are open. The uh, the the game is uh, the opening stage of the game is over, and now usually this kind of game will be very open. It will be decided by by the tactics, by the tactical opportunities. So uh, it's very important to mobilize your pieces as quickly as possible, and then uh, you know your your tactical uh, skills will uh, will come to light, and who is ever better in tactics will eventually win the game. Another very common gambit is Danish gambit. So uh, the same the same idea is uh, to play d5. So for example, you play e4, e4, e5, and now he plays d4. Uh, you take, and now he wants you. Uh, he offers the an another another pawn. So he wants you to take all all his pawns, and then he will put his uh, bishops here, and he will just checkmate you. So you don't fall for this, but you remember the principle. Okay, if he plays gambit, I will play d5. So you just play d5 here. You don't care about uh, getting the pawn. And now, I mean, whatever he does, uh, if he if he takes, you can just uh, you know take with the queen, and uh, again after after this, it will very soon come to just playing normal normal developing moves, castle, develop your pieces in a normal way. So I will not go go into details here. If he do something strange like pushing the pawn, then you can take the pawn, and again, I mean, you you will have uh, some some kind of uh, quick quick development. So the, the idea, especially when you are black. You don't want to waste time. You want to develop quickly because, uh, I mean, he, he has a tempo be extra because he's white, and uh, you don't want to he give him extra tempi by delaying your uh, your development. So when you're black, uh, the quick development is maybe even more important than uh, when you are white. And the last example, just uh, one one more example about gambits. So Vienna gambit. So e4, e5, and now Vienna game is when he starts to play knight to c3. Um, usually you you don't uh, you're not scared about this. Okay, you can just continue your normal development. So the most principled move here is to develop your knight, your kingside knight. So knights before bishops. You want to castle as soon as possible. So this is the most natural move. You can just as well play it. And then sometimes he plays this so-called Vienna gambit. You know he goes for uh, f4 here. And then you remember your principle. You just play d5, and you are fine now. You will just, you know, play normal logical moves, uh, keep track not to lose material. Uh, this bishop will come out very, very soon in one of these squares. Uh, you will very soon castle. You have this uh, c6 for your knight. This bishop is coming out and uh, all your problems are solved. Uh, now let's see what if he plays uh, d4. So if he plays d4, uh, my suggestion, the most natural way to respond is to play d5. And uh, I'll just play now the main line and uh, you'll see how this main line um, can be reached from many different positions. So if he goes on and play Queen's Gambit, the most principle, most simple way is just to play e6, you know, protecting the pawn. And uh, now your goal is very simple. You will put uh, your knight on f6, your bishop on e7, you will, uh, and you will castle. And then you will think about developing the queen side. So let me just play uh, one line. So if he develops knight, you, you develop knight. If he pins, you unpin. If he develops knight, you can... Uh, Okay, you can castle. If he he now plays e3 in order to to develop his bishop, you can play h6, uh, putting the question mark on this bishop. It's always a useful move as a black uh, if you can do it with tempo. And then uh, let's say the bishop retreats. So from this position, you have uh, two different uh, ways of playing. Uh, one way is uh, this so-called Lasker variant. Uh, so Emmanuel Lasker had this um, interesting theory that uh, in the Queen's pawn opening, the black side is always uh, uh, lacking space and uh, his pieces are a little bit cramped. So in order to liberate yourself, you need to exchange pieces. So in the Lasker variant, you want to exchange uh, this knight and this bishop for his knight and his bishop. So usually this uh, knight to e4 is played. 
yes, this is violating principles, you are playing with the same move twice, but only after you have castled. So everything is safe, the game is closed, it's a you know, slow game and you can afford this kind of thing. So usually he takes the bishop, you take the bishop back, and now if he takes the knight, you take the knight uh, with the pawn, and then now you're actually better because after he moves his knight, you will play uh, f5, and yes, you do have double pawns, but this is very strong. Uh, strong structure and now you can think about how the how to develop other pieces usually put your knight either on uh, d7 on or c6 and this bishop is usually fianchetto by playing uh, b6 and then putting the bishop on uh, b7 or on a6 so this is lasker variant uh, if, if he doesn't if he if he does something else for example okay you can keep the tension or you can just take the knight you know and then uh, again, again, continue, uh, continue playing chess. You can consider playing c5 right away. You can consider uh, playing, uh, for example, knight to d7, uh, preparing c5, uh, b6, uh, develop your bishop uh, either with fianchetto or, or accelerated fianchetto, and you just go on and play chess. Um, another way to to handle this position is to create some play uh, here on the on the queen side. So the idea is to play uh, b6, uh, knight d7 and uh, fianchetto the bishop, uh, the order doesn't really matter, and then later on you will play uh, c5. So uh, let me just quickly play play this variant, so let's say that uh, knight to d7, let's say that he, he develops the bishop, uh, I don't know, here, just for the sake of the argument, I play b6, he castled, you fianchetto the bishop, uh, he does something, and then you can go on and play c5. And uh, there are many, many ways this could, this could end up. Uh, one of the scenarios is that so-called uh, hanging pawn scenario. So he, uh, he decides to exchange, you will end up with uh, these two pawns, which are called hanging pawns. And now it's very interesting, very dynamical uh, position, which you can study. If you, if you ever get this position, uh, do your best in the game. And then afterwards, uh, you can compare it to the database. There are many master games played from this uh, position. And then you can learn, you can see what you have done and what masters have done. And then you can learn to play this position from your own experience. And this is basically how, how you should handle uh, d4, d4, d5, c4. So Queen's Gambit, you go in the uh, Queen's Gambit decline line. But what if you play something else? So for example, your opponent could play c4, uh, going for the English defense. Well, then again, you will go for the same uh, same structure, uh, but uh, you'll just have to a little little bit to change the move order. So you'll play here e6, and if he plays, for example, d4, like in the famous uh, fischer spassky game 6 in the World Championship, then you will play d5, and now you just transposed. So it's it's the same like the Queen's Gambit decline. And uh, I mean, whatever he does from here, you can go on and play d5, and then just uh, do uh, what we just said. So... Uh, develop your knight and your bishop on natural squares and uh, quickly castle, insert h6 if he tries to pin you, and then think about how to develop this uh, queen side. So the same logic. And uh, one very important point, you will play queen's gambit decline at whichever other move uh, he, he throws at you. So he can play here, uh, so we covered e4, d4, uh, c4, these, these are the mo most common. But what if he plays like, uh, I don't know, g4, he goes for grob. So if he plays g4, this means that he probably knows some tactical traps. I mean, this move cannot be correct. So the only uh, thing he, he could have uh, gained from this move is uh, some tactical trick. So you don't want to give him tactics. So this is why you don't want to play uh, e4, e5 here, because if you play e5, uh, this pawn is unprotected and you are giving him some uh, tactical opportunities. So instead you want to play uh, solid, so you want to play uh, d5 here. And uh, now, okay, whatever he does, I mean, you will uh, now go into your Queen's Gambit decline structure and you will be safe. So usually I don't recommend playing system, playing, you know, same set of moves regardless of, of what your opponent does. But here I do, because if you play some dubious op opening, and which you don't know, so if you don't know the refutation of Grob opening, this is Grob, uh, then, uh, well, it's the safest option is... Uh, not to try to outsmart him tactically in the opening in which he knows like uh, 12 traps, but you'll just uh, play play solid solid chess and uh, try to outplay him positionally because this kind of openings uh, makes uh, many positional weaknesses. So some other openings, for example, f4, it's not so dubious, it's fine opening, it's bird opening. Again, you'll play d4 and uh, after whatever he plays, you'll play e6 and then again, you will go on and play queen's gambit declined. Also, on any other move, you can face moves like b3, uh, used to be very popular. Again, you don't want to play e5 and immediately give him a target. You play d4, you play e6, and you will go on and continue playing uh, Queen's Gambit decline. 
And okay, this is it. Now you have complete uh, repertoire, you know how to play as black. Uh, by uh, watching this video and uh, applying uh, the stuff I, I just uh, taught you in this video, you can be confident you will play a good uh, solid chess, you can just uh, pick up the black pieces and you can just, uh, you know, play chess and enjoy playing chess, trying to outsmart your opponent, uh, trying to be uh, tactically better, trying to build up a better position and you don't need to worry about openings, opening theory, opening lines, you know, new lines, novelties, this and that. Uh, I mean, chess is a nice game to enjoy, so uh, just stick to the, these opening principles, uh, know some basic few ideas and then just enjoy and play chess. And of course, if you want to improve, you need to analyze your game afterwards. So every time you, you face something new in, in the opening, you will just do your best by following the chess uh, principles, the general principles of opening of middle game. And uh, you will then analyze your game and see where you could have done better. And this is how you will learn. Every game is a new lesson. And just game by game, game by game, you will improve uh, your uh, opening play, but you will also improve uh, your chess uh, as a whole. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, click the like button, subscribe to my channel, uh, leave the comment below, thank me, tell me what you think about this video and this approach and how, how did it, uh, it work for you. I'll be happy to hear it. And uh, I'll see you soon uh, with more chess. Cheers.